Okay, identity is always a certain. And so we need to authenticate the identity, the identification, uh, before we authorize the use of resources in various forms of access control. So, how do we do that? Well, there are only three ways. Something you know, something you have, or something you are. So, uh, the something you know is typically the uh, password. Uh, sometimes it's a pin. Um, there, you know, it, it, well, it, it could be a, a variety of things, but, you know, and pass, password, passphrase, uh, and of course, we want it to be something that you can remember, uh, that you will, uh, are not likely to forget in, in the time period that you need to, to authenticate to the system. And something uh, that is going to be difficult for other people to determine. And of course, this is this is why we are so big on password choice. Now, once again, um, the you know, passwords are weak. People choose bad passwords. Um, people. Uh, do not um, uh, add the uh, complexity that we suggest in in terms of uh, making passwords uh, or passphrases harder to determine. Um, and you know, lots of people use easily guessable passwords. And we allow them to. Well, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we will uh, have systems in place that uh, look at the complexity of the password and, and say, no, that's not good enough. You, you need to choose something better. You need to use uh, mixed case. You need to use symbols. You need to use uh, uh, d digits. Um, you know, the, the more complexity you can add, the better. Um, unfortunately, uh, in many cases, it's actually the, um, the system programmers, the, the people who are building the authentication systems and, and the systems that check the passwords, who are creating problems. No, you cannot use a question mark. No, you can't, you know, we want you to use special symbols, but there's all these extra symbols that you are not allowed to use. No, you cannot use spaces, so you can't have passphrases. Uh, no, you cannot have uh, lengthy passwords and passphrases. Uh, so, you know, we, we enforce uh, a lack of complexity on our users. That's just the wrong thing to do. We should be accepting in so far as possible everything that a user can uh, generate uh, as our uh, acceptable uh, characters in a password. Um, you know, I, I have run into this oh too many times. Uh, you know, if, if so many systems do not allow spaces, period, and and yet that's um, you know an easy way to get people to remember long passwords because you know make sentences that they uh, that they like that they appreciate um, the you know that, that just it it extends the possibilities um, and yes. You know, so many systems just refuse uh, spaces as a matter of course. And as I say, you know, lots and lots of uh, systems uh, say, no, 
you cannot use this character, you cannot use that special character. Um, and uh, it, people would like to create a, a complex password, but they have uh, uh, possibly a limited character set on their keyboard, but also um, the, you know, it's something that they have come up with uh, that is complex, but no, they can't use that character. Uh, and so what are they going to do? Um, uh, so all kinds of, of systems that we go into to try and, and uh, augment these. And, and these days, of course, we're just telling people to use password managers, uh, generating long, complex, random uh, passwords for systems. And yet, you know, th that is not a... Uh, foolproof method either. So, um, anyways, passwords, passphrases, of course we, we store them via hashing. We'll talk more about that when we get into um, uh, cryptography. Interesting use of uh, homomorphic encryption, uh, you know, which it seemingly is a, a new thing, but we've been using it for years. Uh, storing them via hashing. Now, something that you have uh, a uh, a card, a token, a USB stick uh, very often these days uh, that generates uh, passwords. Uh, sometimes it'll generate a, a one-time password based on uh, timing and uh, uh, re-encryption uh, of uh, an original password. Um, uh, yeah, challenge response systems where the, the system will give us something we type that into the token and uh, back comes something so that uh, yeah it's, it's effectively a one time password because it depends on the challenge that is is issued uh, smart cards uh, all kinds of things one time passwords interesting there's um, some banks that are using uh have been using one-time passwords actually print it out you know that you get a list of passwords you use a password one time and then you cross it off tear it off the list whatever it is so that uh, uh, you know it is uh, a one-time password uh, based on something you have which is a physical list so um a number of uh options there um Oh, uh, the, the token. Now, interestingly, um, an awful lot of the uh, cards uh, that are issued, uh, well, credit cards these days, um, and uh, you have to put in a PIN. Uh, so that's, that's multi-factor authentication. That is something that you have, the card, and something that you know, the PIN. So we have, you know, a slight uh, multi-factor authentication system. I find it highly ironic, very interesting, that um, the credit card companies in uh, with, with the new smart card uh, credit cards, um, if you use near-field communications, that's acceptable. You just swipe the, uh, the card and, you know, it, it works. Um, but if you put the card into the card reader, actually insert the card, which is much more about proving that you actually have the card, then you've got to put in the pin. Uh, a very, very interesting uh, set of protocols there, and, and uh, uh, in a sense, a fundamental misunderstanding of, of what multi-factor authentication is and is for.